soon as I got out of Cache Valley up in northern Utah where my son lives, it was cold and cloudy and friggin' cold. Today it was supposed to be the same, but I guess it knows I'm going back to Californication, so I got that. But it's, see, in California you don't get these beautiful clouds and those mountains and all this open space. You get the San Fernando Valley that's got almost, so okay, so wrap your head around that. Everybody knows San Fernando Valley, right? Burbank, North Hollywood, Van Nuys, you know, Glendale, yeah, Canoga Park, Woodland Hills, all those friggin' crap holes that are in the San Fernando Valley. So in the San Fernando Valley are over two million people. Two million people live in the San Fernando Valley. You know how many people live in the state of Utah? Just over two million people. So the same amount of people that live in this entire state are shoved into the San Fernando Valley. And you wonder why people get heart attacks, have heart attacks, and, or they take a heart attack, as Peter Chris said the other day. I almost took a heart attack when he found out Ace was getting $5,000 more than he was. <laughs> I don't know how you take a heart attack, but... So anyways, see, look at you actually have factories up here. But you don't see, you know, when they always show a factory is belching out smoke. This used to, but it doesn't anymore. It burns clean now. That's a power plant. But look at all that. See, you can see down all those houses were not there a couple years ago. This is all new. They're going to build them right up to when this guy sells his farmland. That's gone. Same with here. See, that's what's happening is the old farmers, whenever the first kid that decides, well, I don't want to do this. Like, here's a guy. He's got a little bit of land. There's a guy. So, actually, we're just south of Payson. Dayton, Payson, Utah, whatever. Or are we just coming into it? I don't know. I'll see in a minute. But uh, I just I love I love it up here. But I gotta tell you, last night, look at this. Okay, so Santa Quinn. See that name? That used to freak me out when I was a kid. Because I knew what a Santa Claus was. But a Santa Quinn sounded like a satanic Santa Claus to me. Because we used to come up here every summer. Because my dad would take like a, a month long vacation. Because he was manager of the dairy that he... California Farms, you might remember it if you're old enough. So we'd always usually either start by coming up to Utah and then going all over the United States or go all over the United States or up the coast and across. Like the last great trip, we went up the coast to California to Oregon before it became a, uh, a police state of uh, Marxist. This is 1997, I remember, in August, because the day we pulled into our, because uh, we had a camper, no, no, we brought the, uh, the station wagon that pulled the trailer, and the trailer had eight beds in it, it was a big, nice trailer, and my dad had the, you know, he had the cash for that stuff. So we had a trailer, we had the, uh, the, it was a sheriff's, uh, AMC Matador station wagon with a 401 cubic inch engine. The thing was a beast. And, uh, so he used that to pull the trailer. So it was me, my mom, my dad, 
my sister, and she had a great time, even though she didn't remember nothing. I hope, hopefully, she'll get her memory back and replace all the good memories with all the weird ones she's got. Okay, so we're in Payton or Payson, because that's the new temple they've just built. That's the temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So, yeah, because I stayed at a, a hotel that's right by that. But look at there's like three, four churches all around that temple. There's a lot of Mormons up here, but it's not like it used to be. It used to be like 99%, 98, 97, 98% in the 70s. Then the 80s, it was still in the 90s. And then now it's like... 60 70 percent Mormon maybe 70 either Mormon ex-Mormon you know whatever Jack Mormon so I got so I was here in Provo to record the songs so I got live fast die young or live fast die fast I don't know what I'm gonna call it yet uh, Look at, see that mountain right there? That giant mountain, it's called Mount Nebo. And I have an uncle that used to bring dynamite up to a mining site on the top of that friggin' mountain. That was his job. Not dynamite, I mean, uh, what's the stuff that people blow up all the time? You see it in Westerns, like, don't shake it, it'll blow up nitroglycerin. So he had a, like, a whole wagon full of nitro that he was bringing up there to the, uh, and he'd get paid a lot for it, obviously, because it was ridiculously dangerous. So he's, you know, wagon with mules going up to... Pretty much three quarters of the way of that mountain on the back side here where they were doing some mining in the 1800s. Late 1800s. N.C. Hanks. He was my uh, great 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 grandfather's uh, cousin. Ebenezer Hanks' cousin. So. And he lived, I think, here in Nephi. If this is Nephi, I can't remember. I don't know. Or Nephi, as my friend Gary says. So, he would go up that mountain, Mount Nebo, uh, like once a week or once a, something like that. I, I don't know how many times. So, he's going up one morning. He's almost up to the top. Not quite. And uh, hits, though the horses got spooked by uh, like a mountain lion or something, and they took off. And he's trying to get them to calm down instead of jumping like I would have. And of course, the nitro blows up. And it blows his arms and legs off blinds him. This guy is a jerk. So he's got no arms, no legs, can't see, uh, but he can, you know, well, hey, remember that, you know that stupid, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, one, is that what it's called? Metallica, where the guy's trying to do SOS with his head? Morse code with his head, but he's, you know, kill me, kill me. That's what, how he communicated with the doctors and nurses. And he ended up writing a book about his experience. And it's worth a lot of money. I got a copy of it, and it's signed by, not by him, obviously, because he's got no hand, but it was signed by the uh, president of the church at the time, which was... Uh, Heber J. Grant, and he bought like a thousand copies and signed them all as 
Christmas presents because it's an inspiring story. I always think of that when I look at that giant mountain, I'm like, man, it's such a beautiful mountain and that guy just blew his everything to pieces. So he talks about that happening and then laying there and not knowing if he's dead because he's blind. He also can't speak because he had a hole blown in his throat so he could breathe but he was bleeding and it was a nightmare. So eventually, apparently the, someone heard the explosion, obviously, and a couple of the guys from the mine came down, found him, thought he was dead, but found out he wasn't, and put him on the back, you know, just threw him over the back of a horse and rode as fast as they could from here to the nearest hospital in, or the nearest doctor in Provo, and then from Provo up to Salt Lake, where he spent, uh, you know, years, a couple years, a uh, year or two in the hospital. But they had to put him on morphine a lot. And he uh, talks about, or he doesn't talk at all, but, I think eventually he could learn to talk. He did learn to talk. And that's how he got the book out. Because he, he first he just communicated by doing his head. Blah, blah. This is a story. You're getting a story. But just look at the views. It's beautiful. So, it's not bad enough to have that happen. But then he's got to now come off of the morphine. And he's addicted. He's been on it for like eight months. And anybody that's, you know, tried to get off any opiate knows it's hell. I know. <laughs> so, I just can't under, you know, you know, you you don't have any arms or legs. Or you can't speak. You don't, you can't see. So you can't even go and become an addict because no one's going to give it to you. And they, you know, taper them off. And then they start giving them a placebo, you know, just because it's, it's a lot of it's psychological after you, you're physically done with it. So he, he, he realized that and he got, when, you know, you go into a serious depression, but they didn't know too much about it then. And a lot of people, you know, if they couldn't get back on the opiates, they'd end up axing themselves, killing themselves. And that's what he wanted to do. Actually, it might be there because it was right up Nephi. So see that peak? I think that's Mount Nebo, where the clouds are. The snowy peak and the clouds. That's, that's probably the mountain I'm pretty sure that he was going up. So it's a you know the book's about a hundred something less than two hundred pages, but it's a big deal to have. And I found it on eBay like eighteen years ago for you know forty bucks, signed by a prophet, and you know spent you know, a letter to somebody written in inside the book cover. And I'm thinking you know people aren't really. This is like, he's a relative and signed by the president of the church. Two good things. So, turns out the book is worth a ton of money. Because I'm coming up here, and I come up here and I just talk to people. And I start dropping, you know, some of my relatives' names and eventually I'll hit a name. Like, yeah, my great-great-great-grandfather, I'll start with Ebenezer Hanks. Because he was a second mayor of Provo. He was Brigham Young's, like, right-hand man, you know, blazing the trail out here. He started ZCMI, which is like a big department store up here, uh, which is a Zion's Mercantile company incorporated or something like that can't remember zcmi zc zion something mercantile incorporated look it up so he actually helped start that when he was the second 
mayor of Provo, Utah. Then he quit that to go down and settle San Bernardino. But he doesn't get credit for that either. He doesn't get credit for a lot of things. And he settled Hanksville, which is out, you know, east of here. And uh, he settled Bellevue, which is now Ventura. You know, I talked about that on the way up. A lot of places, this guy just did a lot. And he was, in, you know, in charge of getting the iron works up. You know, making iron, uh, establishing iron mines and smelting and all that crap. And they were good at making pig iron because the rock wasn't very good. And obviously pig iron isn't the best iron, but it did the trick. So anyways, that guy tells a story about, you know, getting off morphine and all that. And how horrible that was, being, you know, blind and blah, blah. But this nurse would stay with him and helped him get through it. And then they, you know, let him out. And he had to have someone, you know, take care of him. And, uh, you know, and he lived pretty old. He lived to be, I think, in his late 80s. And this happened when he was in his 20s. So, wow. But, uh, yeah, so that's what I think of when I see that mountain. That's, that's it. That mountain. That's Mount Nebo, pretty sure. We should see a sign somewhere. Uh, uh Young Living Family Farm. Uh, I'd imagine that'd be Brigham Young Living. I don't know. What are we coming up on, Mona? Uh, I don't know. See the beehive state industry is beehive busy as a bee. But people also think, oh, they're stealing that from the Masons because the Masons use beehives. But no, uh, yeah, this is not Nephi. I haven't made it Nephi. Let me try to get down to a place called. Uh, not Santa Glen. What are, is it? Sika, si, si, whatever. I stop there anyways every time. So I'm sure I've, yeah, because there's a farm there and I filmed it last year and the year before and the year before that. Whatever. So this is a yearly thing now that my son lives up here. I never came up this far. I'd usually stay south southern Utah and I travel all over. I know every inch of southern Utah. Northern Utah, yeah, it's nice, but it's cold and you get snow and, you know, the climate, not the climate, the weather patterns are changing. There's no such thing as climate change and if you want to, you know, think I'm crazy, fine. But if you do your dang homework and look at non-biased scientific fact about every 10,000 years the weather changes the weather pattern changes so we're in for another change and the poles flip a lot in the past, you know, 10, 15, 20, whatever, thousand, thousands of years, the poles flip. You know what's going to happen if they flip? Now that everybody's got GPS and all that crap, it's going to be crazy. But who knows? When that happens, then we'll see. Because we just adjust for it. But uh, anyway, so that's the story, really, that, you know, he blew his... Uh, snip everything off getting that yeah this is the one at the point or it could be that one I don't know but coming up to the next town is going to be Nephi and that's where he was based out of but yeah there's a little more to the story but eh, what am I going to do talk for a gazillion hours and just waste up so what I did is we did two days of recording I haven't played the guitar hardly at all this year. So I tried to warm up on Monday and I 
that I made a video about that failure. And then I was kind of warmed up Tuesday night. Stayed in a really crap-ass Days in too, which doesn't make sense. You'd think they'd all be the same. They're all owned by the same company, parent companies, Wyndham. But this one was a trash heap, and last year I stayed there, it was nice. See, me fly, okay. So, I don't know. I'm gonna complain, I wanna get my money back, or part of it, because that was ridiculous. They charged the most, out of any place I've stayed, out of the 10 days I've been gone, and I haven't made 10 videos, that's for sure. But, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday was nothing but recording. And uh, it was not easy. <laughs> it's like, cut, see my middle finger, fug. Of course, there's someone behind me thinking I'm drunk. No, I'm not drunk. So, oh, for a bomb. So, yeah, I can't feel my fingers, you know, like I tell you, that they're numb. But for some reason, I could sure feel that damn cut. And I cut, I don't know what I cut it on, but it hurt like hell. And it was, But I still got through uh, four songs. So I laid down... Uh, young or live fast, die young or die fast, not sure yet. Uh, tried to get hold on and uh, the two slow songs, but that wasn't working. I tried to run for your life, that really wasn't working. I did rock and roll legend. But, I wasn't tuned down a whole step, I was tuned down a half step. So, E flat or D sharp. No! That's Van Halen and Kiss tuning. I like a whole step, it sounds better, meaner. What did I do last night? Oh yeah, it was Live Fast. So I got that done. It's a different arrangement of an old song that I did. So we'll see. So I, I got four songs down, whether they're useful or not, I don't know. So I should have eight complete now. And two that are, that he could work on, but I don't know if I gave him enough uh, good guitar tracks to work with. I'll find out. So I'm gonna have to come back up and finish. I did no leads. I tried to do a lead and I haven't played all year. So, you know, those muscles, eh. And I didn't want to shred, but that actually is easier to do than... No, actually it wasn't because my picking hand is gone. So the one song where I'm like... Da, 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 I couldn't do it. So I'm like, Cheech. Hey man, da, 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 da. I got a song we're gonna write, man. It's called, uh, what is it called? Eric, my eye. Cheech and Chong, I'm dating myself. So, uh, there you go. So, there you go. I've talked a long time. I don't know how long. Uh, 20 something minutes, 30, I don't know. But you get to see stuff, keep the politics out of it. You know, I don't know why people are on my butt. It says the speed limit is 55. I'm going 78, and people are trying to drive me off the side of the road. So whatever. All right. I'm going to check out. All I'm doing is driving down to southern Utah, about 300 miles, 200 and something miles from here. Almost three. And uh, 220 miles. I think. And then I'm going to, uh, no, that's not, maybe it is, I don't know. See, I'm trying to look at my GPS. Uh, yeah, so I'll spend one more night here and then I'll drive home tomorrow and try to get to Burbank around 10. And that's that. Alright, that's it. I'll make
take another day just gonna give you an update because I didn't do much and I didn't do a lot of driving I mean this is the only driving I'm doing I did a lot of visiting with my son and with my friend because there was recording but then we start talking and we get nothing done because you know we've been friends forever and I'm still kind of dealing with you know my mom and he's lost his two adoptive parents but he's got his two biological parents that he's hooked up with and so he lost two that raised him but he gained two that had them so he's kind of got parents but he kind of doesn't how's that confusing i think they mine stuff i mean they just dig holes everywhere up here and to me i've been you know California wise they're like why are they ruining the pretty plant you know but oh that's a prison right there nice huh uh, yeah so see look at that house that white thing someone's building a house there I'd love to live there but I don't know if I'd like that right there he probably works there or owns it who knows it's starting to get damn cold. I'm gonna wrap up and wrap up. All right. Later. You gotta keep them separated.